Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. Last time we got rid of the Xenos who were invading our world and now we need to, well, level up and I guess go to the last remaining place. We'll maybe do a little bit of wandering around on the, um, like, galaxy map just to see if there's anything else. Just give it a chance to actually give us an event. But, assuming that there isn't anything else, uh, we're probably good to go. So, uh, let's level up and then we'll go actually you know what we should do you know what we should do we should head back to our ship I now always have a backup the reason plan. we should head back to our ship now rather than uh, level up here then go back to our ship is because we're going to want to level up everyone on our ship as well so we might as well do it on our ship yeah that makes a lot more sense actually uh, do we have to walk all the way how do we leave do we have to walk all the way out here is this really how we do it? Uh, I think so. I'm just clicking and making sure. Is the Lehman Rust tanks? I'm assuming. No, wait a second. This isn't how we. This isn't how we go. Pause the game. Stop them from running. Oh Rise no! It must be back top. here then. I'll get left in the wait. How, how are we meant to go back? <laughs> I'm very confused. Wait, was there another exit to the uh, place? We were literally told, um, you know, go back to your ship. Weren't we? Am I crazy? These could be separate points. Maybe I have to speak to her to go back to our ship, the person who was in here? It seems weird. Hmm. Okay. Well. Back in Always here, then. Keep your eye on the prize. Yeah, there's no one to do anything to. I guess I will speak to her Compared again and see what she has service. to say. That was barely a chance. Yeah, let's head over this way. Where is she? She's somewhere? I'm sure. Somebody over here, an aristocrat? I was looking for Clementia. Keep your wits about you. Who does you. not appear to be here. Okay, am I being stupid? How are we meant to leave? <laughs> Maybe I'm meant to go back to my own chambers? Uh, is there money to be made? Uh... Maybe it was outside? I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting very confused. The way to the back room is blocked off. So it Let must be out this doodle. way. Make Maybe I speak experience. to the sergeant? Nothing matters more. Hello, sergeant. Uh, thank you, rogue trader. We'll hold our positions. Uh, must have been outside then. Okay, but we didn't have a ship outside. Um, okay. This is fine. This is fine. Don't don't worry. Don't panic. We will be able to leave the planet somehow. I'm sure. Just checking. Nothing we can do there. I always okay. have a backup plan. Uh, I guess I will walk all the way out. Just looking for ships. See if there's a ship over here. No. Be sure we didn't see a ship at the end here. I always keep um, my options open. Potentially. Okay. Let's go all the way to the back. Maybe, maybe the camera just won't move this far for some reason. Always keep your eye on the prize. Oh, there's just a random thing. Return to the ship. All right. Well, that works. Okay. Well, with that panic out of the way, it's time to go and level up. Welcome back, Lord Captain. During your absence, we assisted the ground forces by coordinating their movements from orbit. Detailed casualty and damage reports have been submitted for your perusal. It is with deepest awe that I inform you that the timely intervention and the resilience of the world's defenders managed to break the back of the raid, which had threatened to turn into a protected war. Dargona suffered losses, but the Hive has sufficient capacity to restore the administrative networks and industries as expeditiously as possible. The world remains intact despite the insidious blow dealt by the Xenos. I have been given Skalandar's reports that he failed to deliver in time. They indicate that Xenos activity dropped sharply after you departed for the Cenaris Maleficum. Considering the scale of the Dar Dargonus raid, it's safe to assume that the Dukari used up all the forces at their disposal and may now require some time to replenish the losses. Without Achilles, we are blind to the scheming of these enemies of humanity, but our strategists are still hoping for a lull in attacks in raids which will allow us to gather our strength for a new conflict. Um, what do you mean without Achilles? He did live, right? 
Uh, you secured Dargonis. Well done, us. Okay. Let's do a save. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any reason to land on Dargonis. It would tell us, probably, although we could maybe unspeak to Achilles, who should then be in his normal position. But I bet he just says his normal things. Right. Uh, let's go into the colony map. Or colony um, thing here. L colony level up screen. That's the word I was looking for. And let's uh, see what else we've got here. So we've got one last one to do in Viabo 6, which is Warp Guides, which is going to increase security. Okay, let's execute that. And then maybe we will travel slowly over there. We could just travel quickly over here, I suppose. Okay, then travel back. We're just waiting for it to tell us that a new uh, development phase has been reached. Then back. And then this will be the development phase reached. Uh, let's just click on these. Wonderful. Hey, there we go. So now we have everything that we can get here. You'll love to see it. So we have everything there. We have everything that we can get in Dargonis. We have everything we can get in Yanis. And we have everything we can get in Foulstone. So we are as uh, leveled up as we will ever be in terms of our colonies. Now let's go and level up our actual people. So back to the bridge. Um, I wonder if I want to speak to Erlet as well. Although I kind of get the feeling that the companions are going to tell us when they want to speak. And I get the feeling that's going to be the next act. Right? Or if you do a companion mission. You haven't really done anything yet. So, yeah. Right, let's do some level ups. Uh, that would be that button. There we go. So, uh, let's start with us. So we get a talent and a common talent. So what am I looking at? What would be good? So previously I thought Daunting Zone would be good. Which makes Overwhelming Stratagem better. I basically never use that. I don't care about my AP. Using a stratagem on a combat tactics area for the second time in a turn refunds 1 AP. Again, I don't really care about my AP. There's there's absolutely nothing that I need from that. Um, no, don't think we need that. Weapon personalization we found didn't work previously, so therefore we're not taking it. Um, yeah, we can do more stuff with Surefire Plan to do more negatives onto people with them. Which could potentially be okay. Uh, personal combat zone. Ability to reposition. Allies gain the ability to reposition the combat tactics area they're currently in. No. Every time allies under the effect of stronghold stratagem or suffer, suffer, have suffered an injury, they gain in bonus plus fell bonus temporary wounds instead. Hmm. All allies in the rear guard area are healed by medikits for 5 plus the grand strategist int bonus uh, plus fail bonus more and gain the same amount of temporary wounds. And it costs less. Sniping zone increases critical hit chance um, for the people in the rear area. Um, each time the grand strategist uses a stratagem, they gain a stack of strategic perfection level. At six stacks, the next stratagem applies all the benefit uh, applies the benefits of all stratagems known by the grand strategist, and then all stacks are removed. I don't think it's that good. What have we got up here? What does it think is good? If there are more enemies and allies in the front line area, you gain parry and dodge. Otherwise, you gain damage. Okay. Using a stratagem on the front line area grants allies in the area dodge against other allies attack. No attacks. No. Um. Using a stratagem on the rear area makes allies in that area lowest priority. No. Personal zone. Uh, allies, in, including the Grand Strategist, in the same combat area with the Grand Strategist gain perception and agility. Okay, that's 3 plus int bonus, which is going to be 9 divided by 2, 4.5 round down. It's going to be 4 perception, 4 bit agility. Hmm. All camp combat tactics areas are increased by int bonus divided by 2%. So 3% if the area was not moved for two rounds. No. Okay, I don't think any of that's good. 
which case I kind of want to go down here and see what we can get in terms of like generic stuff. Already have that. I wasn't really meaning to click on it. I just accidentally did. Uh, could maybe look at Drukari weapon proficiency. We do have Lorazinos. That would allow us to use the Drukari weapons. That would give us something there. We could also look into getting characteristic training for ballistic skill. That would probably go very well for us. Maybe I'll grab... You know what? Let's grab Drukari weapon proficiency. That seems interesting. And then let's also grab... Uh, this one. Char char characteristic tra uh, training ballistic skill. That seems like that would be quite useful. Yeah. Although I was doing war, I was doing lore stuff previously, but I think that this might be good. Let's try and make ourselves actually better. Okay, uh, and then immediately I'm going to be like, okay, new weapons. Um, can anyone use the bloodthirster? Can you use the? Oh, we wouldn't even want you to use the bloodthirster. It's, it's a Drukari weapon, and I guess you could have it. Let's let's assume that you're not going to do that. Uh, let's have a look at this. So, long splinter rifle. Um, does less damage than the sniper. Okay, it has two rate of fire though, for toxic burst. Uh, it has a lot of max ammo and has same armor pen. It could be okay. Let's let's equip that instead of the sniper for now. It gives us something else, so it gives us a toxic weapon. And then, does this have better armor pen? No, it actually has significantly worse armor pen. It's kind of just worse now. For some reason, I was assuming Laz weapons would have better armor pen, but I guess not. Um, seeing what we got here in terms of things. This one... Yes, this one has a nice amount of dodge reduction. It does mean that you can hit people more often. It just doesn't really do very much. Sworn Protector. More uh, armor pen. And has a lot of dodge reduction. Uh, grants resolve for each what? For each enemy killed until the end of combat. That could be okay. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, huh. I don't think we have anything else that's too much better. Yeah, that might be fine for now. We did have that section where we were attacked in melee range in the previous combat, but it didn't actually change very much for us. Yeah, let's do this. Um, you were also attacked in melee range, and we didn't switch to these. Hmm. I don't know, maybe we should have. <laughs> Might be the answer. Um, this, I think, is probably better than the chain sword for you. Yeah, let's equip that. I just want to see it as well. So that'll be that one. Okay, cool. Uh, you got anything better? Just out of curiosity, because we got that blast pistol. Is exactly what you're using already. All right, cool. And this shuriken pistol is slightly better damage-wise than the splinter pistol, but with less armor pen. But we don't really need the armor pen, so yeah, why don't you have that as your secondary? Cool. Right, that's fine. Anyway, getting distracted. Cassia. You get one available talent. Okay. Uh, something in here, maybe? Veil of Protection. Allies that are targeted by Navigator's power gain 10% armor. It is reduced by the amount of Veil Degradation to a minimum of zero. And increased by the infusing parameter of the currently equipped staff. Uh, while under the effect of any Navigator powers, enemies have their armor reduced by two times the Navigator's willpower bonus. Okay. That's not bad, actually. That's reasonable. Unblinking stare. Um, until the end of combat, enemies damaged by navigator suffer plus seven damage from all attacks of opportunity and cannot dodge them. Um, navigator path powers deal one additional damage for every five bonus characteristics of the navigator's currently equipped staff. Okay. Uh, course untraveled. When you use a thing you haven't used already, your perception goes up. Enemies moved by the navigator's abilities gain this. Yeah, there was a good comment talking about how to use the navigator abilities better. I always feel um, weird using them. 
like these uh, like the moving ones because I get the idea like you move them into a pile and you hit them with a big AoE and that sounds really cool but it always comes down to opportunity cost for me in terms of what I could do and like known value of the like the known value of the move it's like yeah I could spend two AP to attack someone oh sorry I could spend an AP to move someone then like two AP to attack them right or I could spend one AP to give them extra stats and then two AP to give them a tur to give someone else a turn which then means that they they can just shoot them and that's a very known value to me so I don't know, I guess we just need to use navigator powers more, and then I would be more into them. It's it's just kind of a mental block, probably. Uh, don't think we need that. Ebb and flow, you gain either an action point or perception. It's probably objectively good, but let's not worry about that. Enemies dam uh, damaged by the navigator suffer two times the navigator's perception bonus percent additional damage from warp effects. The bonus damage stacks for each hit. That's probably pretty good, actually. Maybe that's something to take to get us to use Navigator stuff more. Because um, if we're fighting, like, a strong enemy, this is going to go up in value incredibly. Because we hit him with a Navigator attack. On the next turn, we hit him with another attack. On the next turn, we hit him with another attack. And each time, that percentage damage bonus goes up, 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 and up. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Also, I think it, it increased something due to us. Was it a fellow, an extra point of fellowship or something like that? Due to taking another navigator path thing. Anyway. Argenta! So, uh, what have we got here? Broad expertise. When entering combat, the Arch Militant gains two times ballistic skill bonus weapon skill and two times weapon skill bonus ballistic skill. Uh, not for her. Would have been great for our original concept for our main character, now that I think about it. Where I was like, I want to use melee and ranged weapons. Suddenly that becomes incredible, but that's not the situation we're in right now. 2% armor for every stack of versatility. Uh, very good when you get later into combat. Uh, when the Arch Militants attack, uh, attacks targets that have their armor reduced by any effects applied by my uh, their allies gain damage. And if their deflection reduced, you gain damage. Okay. If dodge reduced, you gain critical hit. If they have the dodge, if they have the parry reduced, then they, you gain critical damage. Okay. Hmm. Uh, waiting orders. For every round, the first single target ability used by an ally on the arch militant grants one action point to that ally. You know what? Sure. That sounds pretty good. It means that not only is she getting more stuff, if allies give her stuff, she gets even more and more stuff. It means that she becomes much more of a, a buff target for us. Here is easy. We get one point. That point goes into Psy rating plus one. Easiest point we could choose. Jai. Okay. Comfort and conformity. Whenever an ally grants the Master Tactician stacks of tactical advantages, the ally also heals one wound for every stack granted. That's potentially incredible. Uh, in the hero's footsteps. Uh, mass tactician immediately gains a turn every time a heroic act is used. Okay. And then I didn't mark any others as interesting. Nerves of steel. Whenever the master tactician or their allies gain momentum, they gain one more. Whenever they lose momentum, they lose one less. Okay. Uh, master tactician deals 12% more damage to targets with less than 50% wounds and heals 20% more wounds... For targets of less than 50% wounds. I mean, that sounds pretty good, actually. Um, that's 12% damage increase, in theory. All the Master Tactician's abilities work as if you had 8 more stacks of tactical advantage. Actually, really good for the self buff. Let's take Hidden Advantage. So, I'm saying it's really good for... Which one? Uh, press the Advantage. So, this one gives you 4%. For every stack of tactical advantage we have, so if it counts as you having 8 more, this will always give you 8 times 4, so 32% additional damage. That's pretty good. An extra 32% additional damage when you use that button. Okay, Erlet. Level up. Uh, so we're at the top here. 
Whenever prey is killed, all enemies in a 10 cell radius around the prey have their agility reduced. Potentially okay. Whenever an enemy is killed by a critical hit scored by the bounty hunter or their allies, the bounty hunter gains 2 times the enemy's difficulty tier damage percent for 2 rounds. Actually, I don't need to read any more of that. Now that I think about it, we always crit. So this is incredible, especially if you're going like, you know, uh, your bonus shot, kill something, you get more AP, you use the AP to shoot something else. That it has a damage boost on it of like 6% damage. I think that could be really good. Let's take it. I'm trying to be less picky because we have a lot of things to choose from. Uh, so we'll see. Right, uh, Psy rating plus one. Okay, actually, no, no, back. We want to change this one. Wait, is this common talent? So is this, yeah, yeah no, Psy rating we do want in common talents. We don't want it in our main talents. Because we could, in theory, take, like, uh, an assassin thing in here. Is there any assassin thing I actually want, though? Uh, whenever you attack an enemy that's at full wounds, the assassin gains dodge and dodge reduction. Uh, whenever the assassin attacks an enemy with a single target attack, this attack reduces the target's armor and dodge by 10% until the end of the assassin's turn does not stack. If an enemy suffers a critical hit from one of the assassin's allies, at the start of the assassin's turn, a new opening is created on that side. Not that important. Whenever Each use of aim for the opening on the same target reduces that target's dodge and dodge reduction by 10%. Assassin gains lethality chance to deal 5% of the target's maximum wounds more damage when hitting an opening. Our lethality is currently 100. Because our lethality is the highest of our dodge or uh, dodge reduction, right? Yeah. So our lethality is equal to dodge or dodge reduction, whichever is higher. So we gain 100% more chance to deal an additional 5% of the target's max wounds more damage. Alright. <laughs> I guess I'll choose that one then. That seems pretty good. Okay. Was there no point when Adira had more Psy rating? We must have... Oh, we have something equipped to him, which is giving... Yes, we have something equipped to him that gives him two. I was thinking there, like, how did he get the extra Psy rating? But it makes complete sense when you realize that... Um, yeah, he... Well, just when you realize that. <laughs> uh, can we have... Uh, where are we? He'd be a power armor proficient person. But it's not really what we wanted. We wanted heavy weapon or heavy armor proficient. Wait, we can take heavy armor proficiency. Oh, why did I think that we still needed something for that? Yeah, I thought we still needed something for that. But let's let's choose it before um, it changes our mind. Okay, and then uh, let's see. Seeing what we got here. I don't really feel like we need any of this. The I guess the healing stuff is kind of useful once per combat. 6 plus Medicaid divided by 5 wounds. So 116 divided by 5 is 23 and a bit. Yeah, 23 and a bit. So basically half of our he health. I kind of think that's good, actually. I, I I think that might actually be good. Um, although the dodge reduction bonus with a uh, melee weapons is pretty good, because that then increases my lethality. But no, let's choose this because I this one scales up because it goes up with our Medicaid. But two, it gives him a heal, and he did have to heal himself in the last combat. I am very much like, oh, this happened in the last combat. Oh, then obviously we need to take it. Right? It solved something that we literally came across once. Um, I don't know if we ever need to act as full cover for our allies. I actually don't know if that's good. Uh, just seeing what else we got here. Um, yeah, no. All the vanguard is at least one ally nearby. They gain some parry. All allies affected by vanguard's ability. Let's not worry about that. Uh... Whenever an attack made by an ally hits the vanguard, it deals no damage the first time. And it applies to everything in a burst. Potentially okay. 
Well, at maximum stacks of unyielding beacon, the vanguard gains 7 resolve. That's pretty cool. Uh, Wall of Rock Creek now grants an additional plus 7 temporary wounds to all targets. Uh, yeah, and it scales off toughness, you say. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to take wall, wall of Ferrocrete. Yeah. <laughs> More temporary wounds for Abelard. Okay. Pascal. Let's go have a look at you. You are now able to use heavy, um, yeah, heavy armor, which is going to lower your, your pitiful dodge, but let's not worry about that. Uh, where is my head? I, I kept some heavy armor for you, right? Yeah. So, 60% armor, 4 armor deflection, halves the dodge, um, so the character wearing this armor will dodge 0% of average enemy attacks this chapter. Gives you plus 5 wounds and 2 deflection against non-human enemies. That's cool. Have we got anything else just to compare it against? So, deflection against area attacks lowers dodge even further, which doesn't matter, and we give you fellowship. Uh, I don't think you need fellowship. Anything else here? Uh, not that one. Uh, that one doesn't look good enough. That can go to cargo. Yeah, okay. And I also don't think we need the synth skin. Okay, so he is now... Um, yeah, a lot... He has a lot more armor. That's good. Right, and he also gets the other benefit of the thing that we took that does something with heavy uh, with heavy armor, right? So we definitely took something already that worked with that. So that, um... Steel of the Forge. There you go. He needs one movement, one deflection, and cannot fall prone. Which is pretty nice. Okay. Also, does he really not have a thing? He doesn't have one of those. I must have something that goes in that slot. Just gonna, I'm not even looking at what these are. I'm just seeing if the slot lights up and then going back to it. Um, as a bolter thing. Nope. I have nothing that goes in that slot. All right then. Uh, here. Might as well give you med kit and then you know what? Why don't you have a large med kit as well? Just because I have so many things. Like I have so many things. <laughs> it's actually crazy how many resources I have. Anyway. Wait, do I have 80 of the... I just realized I had 80 Tears of Repentance. Alright. It's 10% of a uh, Mechanicus Creations cargo. So that's... We have like... Yeah, we have a lot... We have, well, 8 Mechanicus Creation cargoes. Crazy. Right. Uh, then we're going to head over to this guy. I'm not stalling us going to um, Kiava Gamma. We will go today. I just want to make sure that we've... Um, Got everything that we can get. There we go. You? Uh, oh, I have nothing else for you right now. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I can just buy these things? Oh, yeah, I should grab these then. And if you use a non-attacking consumable item, it counts as an attack of a different type than previous attack for the purpose of versatility. Okay, interesting. 13 haywire grenades. Okay, sure. And a targeting visor. Uh, increases the target's hit chance at targets of range 10 or thir further by 20%. Hmm, I wonder who that could be for. Okay. Um, who are my other ones? Oh, Imperial Navy. Uh, select tradable. Trade. Wonderful. So we now get new things with them. So we can now have a look. So those are some more cannons, some more macro batteries... Okay, that's fine. And then we were going to go... Was it, exp it wasn't explor was it Explorators or Fellowship of the Void we were going to work on? I thought it was Fellowship, but... Um, yeah, yeah, it was Fellowship. I just leveled up Explorators so we could do that one thing with them. Okay. I'm sure that was right. Right? <laughs> now, now I'm starting to question myself. It wasn't Caspalika... I think I said that these two had similar requirements. So heretics, yeah, because I said these ones have holy gifts and these ones have holy gifts. Yeah, so it would have to be this one. Okay. Well, let's, uh, oh, first of all, clear selection, hide untradeable. Yeah, there we go. Sort by type. 
And then we just get rid of things uh, that leave us with one cargo of each. We have a lot of Xeno artifacts after that last thing. Right, leave us with one. Don't use all the heretic things. That's fine. Ranged weaponry. Keep going down the list. Okay, all the way down here. That's fine. We want to leave ourselves with some. Melee weaponry. Keep clicking. Okay. Uh, oh, missed one. That's fine. Armor kits. We don't actually have that many armor kits because the armor didn't count as armor from the last slot. It counted as... Um, um, what does it count as? Yeah, it counted as Xeno artifacts. Yeah, trade. So now rank 11 with the Fellowship of the Void. We can start grabbing things. So a new pistol. What's this? Brink Walker, uh, walk, uh, Brink Walker Pendant. The wearer can move without provoking attacks opportunity as long as they have 50%. Uh, they have less than 50% wounds left. Okay. Sure. Staff of Endless Flame. Grants the Inferno ability. That sounds cool. You need Pyromancy for it though, which I don't think we have. Whenever the wearer kills the target marked as prey, they gain a stackable bonus until the end of combat. Uh, this bonus depends on the enemy's difficulty tier. Uh, oh, it's the same as the uh, prey thing. Oh, interesting. So I guess you can double the bonus that you get from prey effectively. Or you can give it to someone else. It doesn't say it has to be your prey. It just says they have to be marked as prey. Right, needle pistol. Or can give the, I can give enemies the fatigued effect. Minus 10 to any strength, toughness, or agility test. Minus 1 movement point. Okay. Three melter charges. Backpack grants one rate of fire for any burst weapon. And then we get the foe hammer, which is a shotgun. Okay, cool. We still have a lot more that we could get in that one. Okay, head out here. Uh, let's just see what we got. So, rate of fire for burst weapons. For us, it's competing against the mantle of heroism. Uh, yeah, which I think is fine for us. Who else uses burst weapons? You use a burst weapon, but yours has 8 rate of fire, so I can't imagine plus 1 is that good. Uh, although range attacks decrease the target's dodge by 5% does not stack. Yeah, I guess that is better. Okay. Um, Adira, is this good for you? Uh, whenever you trigger psychic phenomena or perils of the warp, you gain 1 psi rating. Never mind. Uh, for you... Uh, probably not. You? Yes, this seems good for you. Hopefully that bonus stacks. So, yeah, we'll give you that one. Uh, yeah, not too worried about this one. Not too worried about this one or this one. Paramancy staff can't be used. Not too worried about the needle pistol. Uh, we did previously pick up the Sanctic Powers Imperial Staff. Uh, which I guess could li I have now realized can literally only be u used by you because it's a Sanctic Powers one. It's the Emperor's Wrath. Oh yeah, it's, the, it's basically our ship ability. That's okay. Right. Head out here. I know we're we're almost going to Kiava Gamma. I can only stall so much longer. Ship. While I remember. Sort of from nearest to oldest. Let's have a look. So, 21 times by 4, we already have it. Okay, this can go into a couple of different positions. So this is torpedo tubes. 5 melted torpedoes with 27 damage warheads. This is better than our Aldari Sonic ones. Okay, although we could potentially get... I did just realize we could get multiple uh, torpedo launchers if we got rid of the lance weapon. And end up with just going torpedoes every turn. Potentially interesting, but I don't think that's where we're going. Archaeotech, 4 times by 27 is higher, but not... Well, is it better than 3 times by 33? Maybe. Uh, let's put this on port. Okay. 
Uh, 3 times by 33 we already have. This is 14 against uh, 13. Alright, well, I mean, that's literally just better. Here. Uh, medium range dealing 60 to 70. Then a wide firing arc. Yeah, so I think that's what we have in our dorsal one, basically. No, actually, it's much less. Let's put the sun hammer one in. It decreases our range, but it actually increases our damage quite significantly. Yeah, cool. Let's do that. And then we've also got an upgrade here. Uh, let's see. So, we can get more abilities. And also get some of these things here. These, um... So I know that this is our ultimate post ability. Let me just double check. Yeah, so both of these give us ultimate post ones if we want them. Um, seeing what we got. Yeah, probably not. Torpedo tubes are loaded with three torpedo salvos instead of one. Potentially interesting. Flagship speed is increased by two and maneuverability by one. Damage built by uh, ram is increased, or damage dealt by ram is increased. While the flagship is in such a position, its evasion is increased by 33%. So it'll probably put somewhere on the map, and if we go there, then we're fine. Um, most damage... At the end of each turn, the most damaged sector of the flagship shields restores up to 50% of its strength. Hmm. Interesting. But we could also go in here and take something else. But I suppose given that we don't get legendary ones that often, we should probably take something. I think the shield recovery one sounds like it'll be useful. And then... This is just do more damage, which Imperium Storm does. Um, This could potentially allow us to take out a ship for multiple rounds. That, I think, also sounds interesting. Okay. And then posts. Our warp channeler should be... Because it's based on... Oh, no. That's lower warp, not lower xenos. For some reason, I thought it was lower xenos. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but that that's fine. Lower warp makes a lot more sense. Um, okay. Cool. I think we're fine. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think that's good. Quick save. It is time to, for us to go to the last system. The system we have not yet gone to. Kiava Gamma. It's been a while. This is probably the last planet we have to go to in Act 2. Which is crazy, because as people have pointed out, we are at like 80 hours and we're in Act 2. So, yeah. Let's go. Lord Captain, according to telemetry, we are in the system of Kiava Gamma. The main industrial world of the Von Valancius dynasty. However, Astropass report that attempts to contact Governor Gaprak have been unsuccessful. But wait! The Voxmaster is silent for a few seconds. Lord Captain, we have a new report. Kiava Gamma is sending request to exchange data. Should we accept it? Yes. As you command, Lord Captain. The Voxmaster switches to a nearby comms channel to relay your instructions to the crew. For several minutes, nothing happens. Suddenly, a deafening screech erupts from the bridge's Vox system. You hear violent tirades of garbled by inharic code like the low chuckles of machinery. Lord Captain, interference detected in the compartment's Vox system. Looks like the bridge is cut off from the rest of the void ship. It was a trap? Oh no. Start of picked recording. This is recorded by a servo skull. The void ship bridge. Sounds of working cogitators and officers' footsteps. The everyday scene is interrupted by an ear-splitting beeping sound, followed by lumens going out. In the dim glow of candles and emergency lights, one of the officers in the frame cries out. Another falls to her knees, clutching her head. Over the beeping of voxes, shouts can only just be heard. What's going on? The doors are locked. We've lost contact with all compartments. One of the bridge officers turns to the throne. Lord Captain, the Vox stations are malfunctioning and overloading the system. None of our outgoing transmissions are getting through. The incoming ones that do make it are distorted beyond interpretation. The Lord Captain gave the order to. Um, decipher incoming Vox transmissions at all costs. Proceed. 
A team of decryption experts get to work. Data tethers are inserted into the sockets as they connect to the cogitators. One of the Vox clerics leans over the console, another is writing something on a piece of parchment, and then she bursts into maniacal laughter and stabs herself in the eye with a steel quill. Another scream. A tech priest who was mid-prayer tears himself to pieces with his own mechadendrites. More and more lunatics are mutilating themselves and lunging at others. Portion of picture recording damaged after, after contact with unknown object. Enforcer shoves a rabid servitor away from the Lord Captain as he... I love this guy's eyes as he's staring at uh, this computer. He is in trance. He's, uh, yeah, in a trance. And we are, uh, we made the wrong decision. So we can rush to help the crew shouting out orders, execute one of the lun lunatics and roars a series of orders to the rest, and begins meth methodically exterminating any who show signs of madness. Let's help the crew shouting orders. The image on the pict is fuzzy. Nothing but glimpses of people shouting, racket, and the Lord Captain's orders. Within minutes, the crazed crew members are either dead or bound or un and unconscious. The officers clustered around the Lord Captain are barely breathing, but unharmed. Scrap code. The voice belongs to the on-deck engine seer who has turned to Lord Captain from his station. We've been attacked with scrap code, a tech heresy designed to corrupt machines. The transmission is received from the planet... Uh, the transmission received from the planet was infected with this taint. It is now running through the ship's veins. Omnissiah, preserve us all. Pres preserve us. The Voidborn officer appears before Lord Captain once more. Whatever it is that's attacking us, we have to a backup procedure that can circumvent the Vox barrier. In the atrium leading to the bridge, there is a terminal for an isolated system that might be unaffect. An a loud pop. The pipes over the officer's head burst, and a blast of hot air flings the Voidborn away from the Lord Captain, his body slamming straight through the cogitator pla uh, panel. The picked frame spins uncontrollably. The servo skull was jolted by a gust. The picked recorder fogs over, the Vox picking up the crackling of electricity in a death cry. Gas on the bridge! A junior attendant shouts, and instantly doubles over, inhaling the poisoned air. Give the order to evacuate immediately. Command the crew to carry out their duties till the very last, or run for a life from the bridge. We'll evacuate immediately. The rogue trader personally oversees the evacuation. Bring the plasma clusters. Get the wounded to the exit. The officers repeat his orders. When the servo skull uh, following the rogue trader reaches the doors, they fall to the plasma cutters and crumble outward. The rogue trader is the last to leave the bridge. Leaning on a support beam, the rogue trader takes several deep breaths, trying to flush his lungs with air. Then he straightens, smooths his uniform, and heads towards a goal known only to him. The servo skull follows. The atrium is in a state of panic. Also, again, I love these uh, drawings on the side, or the illustrations, they're fantastic. Uh, the atrium is in a state of panic. Silhouettes skitter about in the dark hall, illuminated by the flickering of emergency lumens. Quirt orders and someone's feverish words of prayer can be heard. Having lost all communication, the beheaded ship is writhing in agony. It takes a while for the Lord Captain to find the cogitator mentioned by the fallen officer. The panel of the isolated terminal is riddled with cracks and bloodstains, and on the floor by the terminal, a tech priest is lying in a heap with his head smashed and technical liquids mixed with blood oozing out of his pores. The Lord Captain decides to take his chances restoring the terminal. I guess maybe if you were on a different origin or something, you might have a chance. Like if you were a tech priest, you could do something, but we'll do this. The rogue trader rips the power key off the tech priest mechadendrite and opens the cover on the terminal. Sparks fly into his face, but he is confident in his manipulation of tangled wires and clanging levers. After replacing the cover and ensuring that the system is restored, the Lord Captain brings up the required data on the screens. The maintenance bay is sending out hundreds of desperate distress calls that have gone unanswered up till now. When the machines went out of control and started turning people insane, others, driven by some hateful and paranoid logic started butchering the servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The tech priests have su sustained heavy losses, but the remains of the cult are still holding the line. Out of everything that's happened on the ship, the situation in the maintenance bay is the dirtiest. The Lord Captain knows where he is needed most. He decides to... Um, send officers to the compartment where the situation is critical. 
The rogue trader contacts several officers via the Vox terminal and orders them to deal with the most critical situation on the ship at once. Yeah, I decided there that what we wanted to do is instead of dealing with every problem ourselves, we would actually delegate something and say, hey, you're, you're needed here, and then we'll try and get back to the bridge. Oh, okay. Lord Captain, the Vox uh, Master's voice is quivering with exhaustion. The situation has been brought under control, more or less. It'll take some time to eliminate the consequences of the attack completely, but the vessel is capable of motion. We may even be able to conduct a warp jump if you feel we should leave the system. Allow me to bring you up to date. Fortunately, the bridge suffered only minor losses. The reports mention only a few casualties that have already been replaced. I have, um, bad news, Lord Captain. The panic, or perhaps the pernicious influence of the power that reached the crew via the Vox is riled up by the unlettered ravel, driving them into a paranoid frenzy. Some, For some tragic reason, they decided the Omnisaya's adepts were to blame and slaughtered everyone they could reach. The void of help and protection, the maintenance crew bays suffered tremendous losses. Thanks to the efforts of senior officers, we did manage to get the situation under control. The losses on the decks are minimal, and the number of casualties does not exceed 2,000 souls. Giava Gamma went silent after transmitting the harmful signal. I will refrain from sending inquiries to the industrial world to avoid a second attack. I'm afraid we have exhausted our options for remote analysis. More information can only be obtained by closing the distance or even sending an away party to the planet's surface. The Vox clicks as Heinrichs joins the channel. The time has come to remind you about our agreement, Malachi. I must be present in your entourage during your expedition to Kiava Gamma. I am counting on your cooperation. The crew is awaiting further instructions, Lord Captain. Okay. Well, we have a couple of planets to go to first. We have this one. Let's go. Scan. Cool. That was a good planet to go to. Next one. Scan. It's an asteroid. Ooh, with a thing. This dwarf planet is marked on the Von Valencia's Protectorate's charts as Atel. Oh, sorry, Atli and serves as a backup source of water for the habitable worlds of neighbouring systems. Due to the abundance of bacteria proliferating in the Atli um, hydrosphere, the extraction of ice was stopped half a century ago. But, much to your officer's surprise, the augurs detected an unidentified mining rig deep underground. Presumably the excavation is aimed at extracting clay minerals near the planet's core enriched with iron and other metals. Send a scouting party or contact the Extractium's Vox station. Uh, let's contact the Vox station. The extract team turns out to be Incendia Chorda's latest investment, whose domain is located just a few jumps from your Cranach system. While this world is of little value to the Von Valancius dynasty, your officers see this gesture as an attempt to test the boundaries of the newly minted rogue trader's leniency. Okay, so the Seneschal considers the act unacceptable and insists on confiscating and rebasing this extract team. Okay. Migos Pascal notes the unusual composition of Atlas core. Subsequent development will allow extraction of rare refractory metals. Heeding his advice, the rogue trader decides to keep it for himself. We allow Insignia Chorda to feed on the crumbs, destroy the extractium, or orders to behead everyone of the e illegal mining rig and send their heads to Insignia Chorda. We'll get the rare res refractory metals. Your people easily assume control of the frightened workers and the token security crew do not even attempt to resist. The Extractium's machines are restarted shortly after and the amassed containers filled with precious ore delivered to the flagship's cargo hold. Oh, it's Plasteel. Oh, I don't need that. <laughs> we're like, yeah, this is ours, but also we're not going to do anything with it. Okay, unknown ships, let's go. Um, there is actually one more um, mission to do in space. Do you want to do that before we do Kiava Gamma? I know it's getting ridiculous at this point. All but hands prepare maybe. for battle stations. Okay, let's see what we got. So we got some infidel class raiders, some iconoclast destroyers up there. Let's start with a simple one. We're gonna do some tor pressure. torpedoes here. Uh, we're gonna move forward. 
who can I shoot? If, if I move, like, up here, I can shoot. Okay. Move up here Fire and shoot, then. Will. That seems fine. Okay, then shoot again. With the force of a supernova. Then do the spin. Okay. Uh, then... Thinking, ooh, shoot the front, shoot the front or side. You're shooting the side. Let's go right hand side. Might be wrong, but let's do that. And then, uh, I see if I want to make it more correct, I want to do this. There we go. That means it's more likely to attack from that side, just due to where their turning circle is. Uh, they can shoot from where they start. Yeah, that was always an option. Hmm. Okay. These guys, I'm hoping we're going to be protected against. They're not even going to get here. All right. A little unfortunate then. Yeah, because they're all shooting the front. Okay. Infidel class raider heading round. Sword class frigate. Nice. That seems good. Melted torpedoes do not seem to go quite as far as um, other things, but that's okay. They can go here. And then end. Uh, torpedo control. Uh, sure. That seems good. Shoot it. Launch batteries. Volley. And then shoot it. With the force of a supernova. Okay. Uh, we can't do these because they're unavailable. Uh, actually, the other ones we could shoot every round, couldn't we? The other torpedoes we could shoot every round. I wonder whether that makes the Eldari ones better. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna head up here. Helmsman, take us in. Is definitely fine. And we're gonna keep the defense up on the right hand side. Yeah. Let's go. Absolutely fine to me. Nothing we need to worry about. This one's gonna do the same thing, basically. Okay. Uh, just seeing what we can do here. Good shoot here. Fire at will. Let's do that. So, big shot. Followed by our dorsal. With the force of a supernova. You love to see it. Turn. Cool. I wanted them turned specifically away from us, so that actually worked out perfectly. Torpedoes Stick them out the away. front. Uh, protect the front. Okay, and then we're done. So they, of course, go for the sword down. class Just frigate, which we were already aware of. And you're shooting the front. Nope, you actually just summoned some more things. Okay, go here. That's fine. Torpedo control. It's not close enough. No. Okay, well, we tried. Um, shoot. Fire at will. Shoot. Lance batteries, volley! Okay. Uh, come past slightly, shoot. Engage the engines. Nice. Go we're around the here, set. and we're out. Uh, yeah, and we're out. They have no way of reaching us, because they don't have a turning circle. And we win. Time to reap the spoils of the hey, battle. Hey, it's more XP. We got a assault scanners. 
Provides void chip weapons with uh, targeting data granting 80% hit chance and 15% critical hit chance. So it would lower our hit but gives us more crit chance. Eh. Not that worried about it. It's not that wor not that important. Right. Save here. And Hmm. I'm tempted to go and do the other space battle. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, we're not going to Kiava Gamma today. Mainly because one, it's near the end of the episode, and two, we've only got one space battle to do, right? We might as well do it, right? <laughs> Where was it? It was on one of these ones, wasn't it? Uh I it must be on this one, because I haven't explored all the worlds. We just double check that I've explored yes, yeah, so I explored that one. Yeah, even though it says there's space combat, I explored that one. Yeah, so it must be the one of... Oh, I haven't explored a world over here? What am I doing? Okay. What did I not explore here? Was there another battle that I ran away from? Already explored. No, it's, it's just lying to me. I've done this before. In my head, I was just like, wait a second, this is familiar. This has all happened before. Okay. Quick save. And let's head all the way over here. Warp travel. And then it was this one, we reckon. Yeah, so travel here. Then travel here. Then travel here. Right. Time to attempt the same void ship battle we've tried before. But there are some differences this time. We are notably um, stronger. Right. And we have an ability that allows us to recover shields. Which I think is probably the main difference. <laughs> that I think is probably huge for us. This hallowed vessel's okay. bulkheads will hold strong. So we do more damage. Our ships are better equipped with shields. That one did not die immediately, which is nice. Please attack it again. Okay, that's fine. Excuse me? That's fine. Right, let's start by, like this one's the one I'm thinking of, right? We restore the most damage sector shields up to 50%. I think that's gonna be huge for us. I do arc augury here. So that, it doesn't increase the range of being able to hit like this, but I can hit like this. Engage the engines. There we go. Okay. Dorsal can also Fire shoot. At will. It can also do nothing. Land this one. Batteries. Volley. Um, kind of expecting a little bit more there. Spin it. Almost killed it. Uh, round here. All hands, prepare for acceleration. There we go. Wait, are these on the same cooldown or are these on different cooldowns? For some reason, I thought these were the same cooldown, but these actually appear to be different cooldowns, which would actually be great for us. Let the void sort okay. them out. So, it's one of these two. It's working out where they're gonna go. I mean, look at your angle. If I do this, our left side seems like the um, most likely side for you to go to. I think these all have their own cooldown. It's kind of cool. Okay, two more spawn in on 10 rounds left. That's fine. They move in and immediately attack. I, I've already just, uh, you know, I've already um, said my piece on that. I think that they probably shouldn't do that, but anyway. Express my displeasure, I think, is what I was going to say. That's fine. 
it's not actually taking that much damage, which is good, although I suspect it will die soon. We'll see. Oh, they are grouped. Okay. Okay. Uh... Well, if I want them to hit immediately, that's the way to do it. Go there and blow up. Nice. Spin it. Okay. Go all the way around and hit it with some dorsal Fire shots. At will. I could possibly restart shields this turn as well. This seems like a good turn to restart shields on. Uh, I don't quite have the angle to hit, but if I I strafe two to the side, I can now With shoot the force you. Of a supernova. Wonderful. And I already clicked restart the shields. Be harsh, but we so we get the free harsh. shield restart. I lift up my voice in prayer for this vessel and its hallowed guns. Like how it just came back to the starting position here. Okay. This is fine. This is fine. Sword class frigate still there as well. Okay. Uh, actually go here. Shoot it. All hands prepare for acceleration. Okay, follow up with one of these. Lance batteries. Volley. And then we don't quite have the ability to hit it, so let's go around slightly and hit it here. I was hoping to hit the other one this turn, but let's not worry about that. Drop them off there. We're going to go as far up here as poss possible, but slightly turned. Then we're going to make our rear the one that's protected. Okay. I mean, that seems good to me. New one spawning in. That's okay. Six turns left. We're not really that hurt. So first one comes in, it's shooting the other ship, I assume, yeah. Which is doing surprisingly well. This one comes in out of nowhere and uh, is no doubt going to shoot us in the side. Yeah. Oh no, it's shot one of my torpedoes. It's fine, this one is going to shoot us in the back, or is it shooting the other ship? It's again the other ship. Which is now actually significantly hurt. He gets a turn, though. No? Okay, torpedo. Go here, blow up. You know, every enemy we kill is an enemy that isn't shooting us. It's fine. Oh, we have basically no movement this turn. Large Shoot batteries. It. Volley. Uh Let's see if we've got anything else we can do here. So you're gonna have to come around this way or that way. Uh in which case we probably want to protect our left side anyway. I'm gonna turn you. That's perfect. Um we start shields. Oh wait, it's forcing us to go up here. Oh, I don't know why it had our movement as like it. It was acting like we um, couldn't move at all. But actually, we we can move quite a bit. Uh, let me just see here. Arc augury. Set. There we go. Shoot Macro it. Micro cannons. Open fire. Can I do this? Yep. It's not quite dead yet, but it's getting there. 
Uh, and then end our turn. Oh. Then slightly Elf turn and end our turn. Take us in. Five friends left. This thing is dying this turn. Okay. Didn't die to the first hit. Alright, so we have four turns left after this. You're gonna shoot our side, which we have protected. And we were restarting our shields anyway, so. No, we're not that worried about it. With the force of a Hit you here. Head round. Some of this. All hands, prepare for acceleration. Okay. Yeah, these are locked out because we use this one. Okay, that's fine. I was just double checking there. Fire yeah. at will. This is how I thought it worked. It's, it's just that I guess you you have to charge up each individually and then you can only choose one. I think it's like one a combat or something. Anyway, um, one of those. The void sort them out. And then we will protect our left hand side. Might be backside here, but we'll see. Four rounds left. Okay. So this one, if it's shooting us, is shooting us in the side. It didn't shoot us at all. That one... In the back. Oh no, might be still kind of the side. Don't know. That's fine. I think that it counted as the side, which is quite nice blow up the destroyer. Okay, uh, we can't restart the shield yet. Do this to start with. Um, kill it. No one can outmaneuver House Orcelio. Okay. Three turns left, two turns left. Oh, we killed all the enemies? One turn left. We did kill all the enemies. All right, wonderful. Battle is over. We gained, I was gonna say zero XP seemed a little bit stingy. Yeah, we leveled up and we got some God's Bane Lance weapons. Ooh, nice. Okay. And now we can access the remainder of the planets in the system. Nice, okay. Which should be like all of them. Let me just see here. Okay, it's not going to tell me about that one. That's fine. Scan. Smuggler's Cache. Seven Flamers, plus a seven swords, some last guns, and some axes. Alright. We'll take that. Plast steel that we don't need. Okay, head over here. Not explored. We got another piece of the Archaeotech uh, mechanism fragment. Going to his keen intellect, more than a bit of luck, we managed to discover several um, fragments. New journal showing the way. Uh, showing the way. Um, pointing to the location of the fleet's mothership, the Muro 79 system. I don't think we've been there. I say with no real confidence one way or the other. Yeah, I don't think we have access to the Muro 79 system. Scan. Cool. Leave orbit. Muro 79. How would I know this? There's a thing that shows us every world we've been to, right? Uh, yeah, I've seen it before. So, how do I... Corpus Valancius? Worlds of the Expanse? No, I'm kind of looking for systems of the, expa of the uh, Expanse, honestly. Um, hmm. Yeah. Muro 79. Muro 79. Muro 79. 
don't see it anywhere doesn't mean it doesn't exist it just means I can't see it we'll check it isn't one of the I'm just looking at the other part of the map as in the background see whether it's one of is an area no that seems distinctly like somewhere we do not have access to maybe I am wrong but I don't see it on our list uh, okay then. okay then that's fine Right, back over here. Back over here. Back over here. Travel all the way back over here. Go in. There is still one planet left to scan. Which I believe is Kiava Gamma. Right, uh, void chip management as well while we're here. We got another upgrade. Um, so we took steady hand. Steady hand is really good. I'm going to take steady hand too. Steady hand's the one that gives us the 50% uh, chance of it being a shorter cooldown. Which is just incredible. Um, I kind of like sanctified restart. Yeah. Okay. I think Sanctified Restart would be good here. Basically, it means that our Restart Shields is better. Cool. Oh, and then the whole reason I went into that screen in the first place um, is these weapons. So, we've now got Dorsal Weapon that I can put in here. Oh, that's cool. I've never seen this menu before. This is actually very useful. Alright. <laughs> well, uh, I'll do that more in the future. What I did is I clicked on it. Hmm. Interesting. Um. On, only a rogue trader can afford to possess a weapon that so outrageously disregards the laws of the Adeptus Mechanicus. <laughs> eee. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh. Head over here. Do one last quick save. And click on Kiava Gamma. Scan it. Cool. And now, we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.